Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Consulting Success Podcast. Today, I'm very excited to have George Shakar. George, welcome. Thank you, Michael. It's happy to be with you. It's a pleasure and honor, actually, to be on such a well-renowned podcast, uh, one of the top uh, consulting work, uh, podcasts in the world, if not uh, the, the best. So uh, happy to be with you. I really appreciate uh, the kind words. And uh, we, before hitting record, <clears throat> just spent some time talking about uh, where you grew up and, uh, and sharing our, uh, our love for, for the Middle Eastern region and, and all it has to offer. So I really enjoyed kind of connecting with you around that. Uh, but for everyone who is wondering who is George, if you're not familiar with George, uh, he is the CEO of Link Advisory Group. He's a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he's also a board member to several companies. Uh, his clients include well-known names like Marriott Group, Hilton, and a whole bunch of others. Uh, but before we get into kind of how consultants can start to learn and apply the, the best practices uh, and the, the tactics and the mindsets and the principles, George, that you have put to work that have really helped you to grow many businesses uh, quite rapidly. Like, take us back to, to the early days. I know you share with me that you are originally from, from Lebanon. Uh, before you actually started consulting and advising for organizations, what, what were you doing? What was your kind of timeline and, and career path from uh, you know, a young guy in, in Lebanon to, to where you are today uh, in, uh, in Boston, in the US? Such a very uh, open-ended question. I could yes. talk for <laughs> hours, uh, but uh, I wanna make it as uh, concise and short as possible. Well, you rightfully said it. So I'm originally Lebanese. I was born and raised in Lebanon. And uh, for whom, know, uh, who knows our region in the Middle East, uh, we've uh, I've grown in the civil wars times in Lebanon. So. That obviously uh, have impacted a lot, uh, you know, uh, the level of resilience, uh, you know, uh, making sure that, you know, uh, you find uh, your own way around things. And this has been uh, part of, of who I am and uh, has always been uh, uh, influenced, uh, has always influenced, uh, you know, uh, uh, me looking also at the, the family and the way uh, we were able to, you know, avoid uh, all the hot places during that uh, those uh, tough times. Mm. So yeah, uh, this is this is basically the start of George. It's uh, it's all about hardship. Uh, it's all about the 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 learnings that uh, that I went through. Uh, I am a hotelier by education. Uh, I was born uh, in a in a, in, a, in a family where values are uh, really important for us. Commitment, loyalty, uh, honesty, and uh, you know, always being fair to each other and so on. So as a hotelier, obviously translating those into the service industry is also key, committed to the service, yeah. committed to you know, making people happy and, and so on. So hospitality was my first, uh, uh, my first interaction with the business world. I had uh, always an entrepreneurship mind, uh, or uh, I, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur by, uh, at heart. I started a small uh, wedding planning company in the early days, uh, even during my, uh, my university times. I've done uh, six, seven weddings at the time where wedding planning was uh, not yet you know, uh, known in our part of the world. Mm. Uh, but then, you know, worked my, my way through the hospitality industry, working with groups like Hilton's, like Sheraton's during those, uh, those times and uh, all the way to, uh, you know, uh, from Yemen in the GCC to Saudi, also in the GCC, GCC meaning the Gulf region, then to Abu Dhabi uh, or the UAE and Dubai recently. So, uh, so yeah, this has been a bit uh, my my historical, you know, moving from hospitality to advertising and marketing at some stage, uh, you know, being in the communications field, then moving back to hospitality on the development side of, of the hospitality, developing projects and landmarks such as the Louvre Abu Dhabi, you know, Saudiat Island, landmarks really that uh, I was blessed and uh, being part of a team since 2007, uh, you know, who developed all those uh, 
uh, you know, uh, projects, leading communications for the group and being able to really communicate with uh, global brands and stakeholders across the, the globe from uh, the likes of uh, the French uh, museums uh, or Agence France Musée to the, to the Louvre, to the British Museum Guggenheim, you know, architects, uh, the likes of Brian Gary, Jean Nouvel, and, you know, all these were part of the right. communication stakeholders. Uh, so this is, has been, you know, uh, a journey that uh, had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, tough moments, uh, you know, moving from, from a country to a country like a nomad, you know, uh, and I guess this is uh, one of our uh, uh, Lebanese destiny, you know, a, a destiny of a Lebanese is always being a nomad because of the situation in Lebanon. That's, right. that's how it is. And I guess this al always uh, give us uh, strengths and, uh, you know, and more power to do better and better and uh, succeed and, uh, uh, and reach where we, where we reach and now you can look globally, you can find, uh, you know, Lebanese everywhere and uh, yeah. you know, people from- I, I, want to, I want to explore more of that, that experience and, and, you know, really the, the mindset of, that came from that experience as we continue our, our conversation. But I, I have to say that I've, I've never worked directly in hospitality other than some service jobs that as I had or had when I was a kid, but, mm -hmm after um, living and building a business in Japan for, for many years, I've, I've always been uh, so enamored and interested in the world of service and hospitality when you are able to create these uh, experiences and these environments for, for people, just good services, just something that I've always uh, valued and your values that you just shared around family and honesty and all these really resonate with me. So I think we, it sounds like we have a, a, a lot in common um, and so I'm, I'm going to, I think I'll, will very, I'll enjoy this conversation, but, um, you, you mentioned that you focused on kind of the tourism hospitality world pretty early on. Where did that come from? Did like, how did you, I know you did the wedding business, but why did you decide hospitality as opposed to something else completely different? Uh, I mean, there was no real, uh, intention. I guess I was attracted to the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. My personality, my character, being a person who loves people and uh, is very much uh, uh, likes to socialize, uh, it was a natural pick for me. I didn't choose it out of a scientific or any sort of study or, you know, at that early age. I just felt that, you know, this is what I want to do. I love f and I love restaurant business. I love, uh, you know, uh, food. Uh, I love, uh, you know, fine things in life, uh, mm. i.e. experiences. So every single experience on a personal level, I like to enjoy it from A to Z. So that has been uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, got just attracted me. And uh, I found okay. myself in the hospitality industry, obviously with a lot of mentors around me that helped me to, to grow into, into where, where I reached within, mm. within that career. Uh, that's all, always, um, I say that, you know, I'm a hotelier by heart and I'm a hotelier by, by, by education because hospitality industry uh, has, uh, has impacted the world uh, in many areas. And, you know, uh, I used to, um, uh, one of the CEOs of the major advertising agencies used to pick people for account management from the hospitality industry to manage clients, obviously for a reason, right? Uh, so, uh, so the hospitality has a lot to offer to all the industries around the world. Eventually the hospitality is an amalgamation of everything. So you can be an accountant and a financier, you can be a housekeeper, you can work on the maintenance and engineering, you can be, so it is an amalgamation of everything. And then a lot of my hospitality friends, they ventured from hospitality to other industries such as myself, where right. I ventured eventually from being into operation to moving into development and creating destinations and attractions into creating a transformation uh, and the growth accelerate uh, some sort of uh, consulting within transformation and acceleration, uh, you know. Uh, and George, when you, when you think about, so, you know, you, you started in hospitality, you went into kind of advertising and, and, you know, you went in a few different industries 
but you've often kind of ended back, as you mentioned, in the world of, of hospitality. Um, looking back kind of from where you are today, how important do you think it is that you had a specialization, that, that you had a real focus and that you've kind of stuck to, for the most part, uh, the world of, of hospitality and, and tourism and so forth, as opposed to having many, many different things and just being able to work with any different type of organization. In your experience, like has that played a pretty pivotal or important role to, to be known as an expert in the kind of you know, hotel management or hospitality or tourism industry? It's an, uh, it's an important question. And my answer to that is yes, specialization is key. Being known for something is key. Uh, you know, this is uh, your brand that, uh, that people, you know, uh, whenever they hear your name, they know that you have this background. Uh, now to be able to pivot to other industries or to go a little bit one layer uh, mm. on top of a certain specialization, it has to be as well linked to that in a way or another. So, uh, so yes, it is important. It is crucial actually to be known uh, and to have an experience. And the more you build up this experience, the more you will have credibility as an individual, you know, working with people. Uh, your experience becomes uh, really wide. And uh, now the, what I would like to, if I want to give advice out of my own experience is while you are focusing on, on, uh, on an area, uh, try to explore what comes around it and not just be uh, stuck in, in, the, in one area specifically. Uh, can, you, because, can you give an example of that? Yeah, for example, if you're, if you're a hotelier like myself, so I started, I did uh, a lot of internship when I was young, such as in the F&B in restaurants and hotels and what have you. Eventually, I'm a very motivated, self-motivated and amb highly ambitious guy. And I always wanted to move forward in the hospitality. So the, the ultimate progression within where I wanted to reach was in the development sphere rather than just being a hotelier, operating a hotel or operating a restaurant or what have you. Mm. So uh, I went and I joined, obviously, uh, a developer that develops attractions, develops landmarks and develop tourism for a country. So it's not uh, uh, hospitality in the sense of a hotel itself, because there is always a misperception that the hospitality means hotels or hospitality means uh, you know, it means wellness, it means spa, it means attractions, it means leisure, it, it means all these things. Mm -hmm. So try to uh, really uh, get the experience within an industry and what does it entail. And I'm sure uh, with every single industry, there is, you know, there are a lot of uh, specializations that roam around the industry. Try to explore them and then choose where you want to be and where you want to go out of there instead of just right. getting stuck somewhere because that's experience that's uh, yeah. diversity that's multi-skill that's uh... i think that's a really good piece of advice it's, it's a good uh exercise to have people think through right a bit of creative thinking um where you are where do you want to go where could you be uh don't just accept accept the status quo but allow yourself to kind of enjoy that thought process and play around with it a little bit uh, a, a great a great idea so I, I want to get into how you took your, your company, Link Advisory Group, from, from zero to multi-millions in a pretty short period of time, because I'm sure there's, there's lessons inside of that. But before we, we go there, uh, Link is, kind of, is established or at least based in the UAE. You today are, are in Boston, which is kind of your, um, you know, your home. Uh, walk us through, like, wh why is that? Why company in UAE, you're in, in Boston? What's... What's the reason? That's a nice question. It's, it's just happened this way. Uh, uh, actually, um, I moved recently to Boston. So it, I've been here for the last, uh, I would say, three to four months. So uh, very yeah. it's very recent. And yes. we, our operation is still in the UAE. And uh, managing things from here with the team and with my business partners and what have you. But uh, I believe that the U.S., uh, is also a fertile ground to expand and to uh, start also uh, because of uh, many, many things. One of them is the entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Boston has been known as a, one of the major incubators in the, in the world. 
uh, sure. along Silicon Valley, and uh, we cannot discount that. So I believe that this is a, a real place for Link Advisory to also uh, plant a seed and start growing here, knowing what we can offer. I believe uh, I believe this is this is really a, a good place to be. I thought maybe you just came because you wanted to experience the Boston winter uh, and the UAE was getting <laughs> was getting a bit too warm or something. But, um, well, that's, but maybe that's another reason. <laughs> there, there we go. So so let's let's dive into to link itself, because you, you talk about this uh, openly that, you know, you started it from from almost nothing uh, and in a fairly short period of time, because the company's only been around maybe six or so years, uh, it's generating, you know, multi millions in, in revenue. When you look at everything that you've done in the business from start to where you are today, what do you feel? And maybe there's, there's just you know, a few things, or maybe there's many, but if you could identify and kind of narrow in on a few things you feel kind of contributed most to the rapid success, what, what would they be? Well, first to start with, Link has, was, was established in 2015. So almost seven years, in 2012, 22 will be seven years. Um, what contributed to the rapid uh, is passion, is passion for the business, the, uh, the, uh, the wanting to create something and the purpose that was also uh, attached to, to that. Meaning uh, Link Advisory today, when we started the company, we started the company as a hospitality uh, development and advisory firm because mm. of my background. Right. Uh, now, with all my experiences, and as I mentioned at the beginning, everything is linked. That's why link, right? Everything yeah, is linked. Yeah, there you go. The name, yeah. Um, I found myself with, with my partner, obviously, by default, going into transformation. Uh, even when we're working with the hospitality, so one of the groups we worked with in Indonesia, for example, uh, they needed, uh, you know, a lot of work on their group. They had 15 hotels and they needed to create some sort of a portfolio strategy and what have you. And we realized that, you know, it's not just the strategy, it's the people, it's, uh, it's everything around the business. And um, transformation is all about people. So you, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, develop or grow a business without considering this as a main factor, whether on link side or on the on link client side. So we moved to the, to, to, uh, to the transformation aspect of the hospitality consultancy. And I believe this was one of the first because hospitality consulting has been traditional since ever. Right. And the way we looked at it is uh, this cannot carry on. You know, uh, uh, you know, the typical feasibility study, finding oh, no, an operator, you know, all these services are great, but this is really all traditional uh, we, we, we realized that this needs to, to change and it has to do with our characters, being entrepreneurs, mm. uh, being also working with large groups previously. Right. Uh, we didn't feel uh, we had only a consulting uh, trait. We also felt that, you know, we have, we, we, we approach this with a bold, honest, uh, deep uh, rooted conversations. And that's what created the grip and credibility with clients. We are not scared to say the truth mm -hmm. when we talk to people. Obviously, uh, a lot of consultants or consulting concept traditionally is always putting the option in front of the client and let the client choose. So you make sure that the responsibility lies on the client. Well, we believe you need to, to give the client a handle, you know, and you need to create some sort of a direction and you need to be bold and very... Uh, and and George, sorry to interrupt and to jump in, but just to clarify. So does that mean that you, you, know, you are giving a very kind of a direct recommendation? If you, if you really believe that there's a best path for the client to take, are you just going to say, hey, like, here's, here's where I feel you should go and why? Or just walk us through, like, what, what does that look like for you when you say that you're giving them a handle? First, we have our, uh, created our own intellectual property. We call it the transformation intersect. Uh, it's a methodology that we always use uh, that creates growth. It's some sort of an inf infinite process that works uh, uh, on two pillars, people and clients. People, we mean internally, the process, the quality, the leadership, the coaching, and you know, the optimization of all of this, the vision. And then the client is, you know, the client leads your innovation in a way or another. 
they need to be part of your product development, the, the experience journey, and they, the, the value of the organization in terms of you know, commercial or valuation, what have you, comes also from the client base you have and from the, you know, uh, so this is the methodology that we use. It's always right. the point of uh, intersection. That's what's called the transformation intersect. It's where the growth happens. It's where new intention push really hard on current limitation. So, uh, so that's the, the approach that we take. Mm -hmm. And uh, we obviously explore many directions, but if we feel strong about one of the directions, we, uh, we make sure to tell the client that this is what we think needs to happen. And this is what, mm -hmm. we, like we, we deal with it as entrepreneurs. We don't deal right. with it just as consultants. And that's, right. I think, created credibility, created safety. Because, you know, with uncertainties and with plateaus and companies are really backing and uh, losing market share. There is a lot of uncertainty, fear, and what have you. Yes, and what yes. the last thing they need is someone that gives them many options and right. really doesn't really guide them and uh, just right. really throw the fireball in their hands. You need to hold that fireball together. It's like you're one, right? You're, you're not a client and I'm not a supplier. We're yeah. a, a part, we're, we're a team. We're partners in this, and uh, your success is our success. That's I think that's, that's yeah, it's it's a very powerful um, idea, and one that I believe more people should practice. I'm I'm very interested in your what you mentioned that uh, you know the uh, hospitality kind of management, the the process, the approach that many organizations and consultancies and firms were taking was very old school, uh, and here you're bringing a newer approach to it. What have you found that works best when you are trying to kind of topple an old way of doing something. I think, I believe many consultants see a better approach. They kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel, but they find it hard to communicate that to the market, to their ideal clients, because it requires a lot of education. It requires maybe the client to, to do things differently than they've done them before. If they're used to just doing the feasibility study and you know so on, so on, it's like, that's what they're used to doing. So if you're trying to bring a whole new idea, that can often take a lot longer. What have you found? I mean, I know you mentioned having kind of deep, meaningful conversations with clients. Is it as simple as that? You just do whatever is necessary to sit down and have that kind of conversation where you can be very open? Or is there something else that you've found is, uh, you know, plays a big role and has a big impact when it comes to getting people to see a new way of doing things? There is the uh, the typical approach to this, and there is the uh, natural, the, <laughs> the natural approach. Let's, let's okay. So the, there is a typical one, and there is what we found. Let's put it this way: the typical approach is that you need to educate. You need to go on social media, on LinkedIn. You need to write, you know, the pieces, the white papers. You need to uh, attend events and be be part of, you know, of the of all the scene. But also, there is what we found. And this is where you will be surprised that companies and owners and entrepreneurs are screaming for something new. Mm. They are they want to hear that there is something, uh, you know, uh, non-traditional that can support them to grow their business and yeah. uh, uh, help them to bounce back. Uh, it's not it's not magic. It's as simple as that. The magic, I believe, uh, lies in uh, the. The, the values that you bring to the table. Mm. You know, it is, uh, it is making sure that the client shares your values. Because if client doesn't share your values, this, the journey cannot carry on, you know? And uh, having in a, being in a, in a still developing market uh, where, we, use, where we, uh, we do business in our part of the world is very tough to find uh, clients that share uh, those values, not because uh, it, they are not there, definitely they are there, uh, but there is a traditional cultural way of doing business, which mm. means there is a lot of last minute approach. There is a lot of, um, um, uh, you know, ap approaching the consultant uh, in, in a in non-serious way. Uh, there is a lot of uh, disempowerment of the mm -hmm. between the ownership and the management, 
So it's like to some extent you have a team that is managing, but you know always the decision yeah. comes from the owner. There are a lot of those companies uh, in in our part of yeah. the world. And, and George, uh, how, how but how do you find the values? I mean, how how are you how are you able to identify whether a prospective client and buyer shares the same values as as you? Is it just through the conversation? Is it asking some questions? What, yeah, how do you kind absolutely. of align that? Conversations and asking questions. It's uh, you, you just you realize from the first minute their approach. If uh, right. they want something quick, dirty that uh, doesn't make sense, and you know they they are not uh, giving uh, the right uh, weight to what they are trying to do, you feel that you know they, they might not be the right people for you. Valuing mm -hmm. people, you can easily. Uh, spot from their organization do they value people do they is culture important for them yes or no is it all about the commercial only yes or no uh, well basically it has to be about the commercial but right. it's also about many other things yeah um, so it's the it's it's the entrepreneur also the owner of the of the business you will be able to understand how integral they are uh, what's the reputation of that company uh, why people leave the company? Why the turnover is high? Uh, yes. Do they uh, do they really have a genuine interest to change all of this, or it is just an exercise because the board wants it? So right. all these things you will be able to discover when we do a discovery session with the client. Right. Then you will uh, you will you will say at the end of the session, uh, this is an interesting job. It uh, has a lot of challenges, and uh, we want to take it on board, and we try to design the relationship. We put our approach and our methodology at the forefront. We don't, uh, the way we do it is we don't uh, go to take the business and then we introduce them to how we do it. We, when we want to take the business at that time, we tell them how we do it. We tell mm -hmm. them we will not bullshit you. If you're not going to be committed, we'll not be able to work with you. If we are recommending a solution and it's just being put in the drawer, this is not going to help you. And we will raise the flag. And in fact, uh, a couple of years ago, there was a client that was not uh, really taking what we're doing seriously, and we had to stop the mandate. Right. Uh, and it's not. It's not. Uh, it should be this way. Uh, we could uh, probably went another two, three to four months and charge the client more, but we believe that this is the best way to go: is to tell yeah. the client you're, you're you're wasting your money because you're yes. not being able to. Yeah. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. So I want to take us back to, to the growth of your business. Um, looking back, is there anything that, that you would have done differently? Knowing what you know today, is there anything that you feel, oh, if I would have done this earlier, if I would have done this differently, yeah. we could have been able to grow even faster or be more successful or more profitable or what, what stands out for you? Uh, I would have loved probably to have more mentors. More mentors, okay. Yeah. Uh, Why is that? I guess because of the way uh, culturally I was uh, brought up is about depending on yourself most of the mm -hmm. time. And this is something that I discovered in the recent four or five years, that uh, more mentors along the way is, very, uh, is crucially important. And this is why I make myself available as a mentor for many young entrepreneurs. It's out mm. of that pain, basically. Now, um, other than having more mentors uh, throughout my journey, I would say uh, for the business of Link Advisory specifically, is uh, having uh, a lot of uh, test, test and uh, testing at the beginning of the business. What do you mean by uh, testing? Like uh, share, like when you create an, uh, an IP, you have to, you know, share it among friends, among right. uh, maybe business peers, get more opinions around it. I guess this is uh, something that we did not do at, at first, but we were able to recover from this right, okay. like shortly after that. This probably costed us a couple of years at the early stage. Right. Um, well, you know, all of these things, there is always some, some things that you would, sure. you would have done differently. Of course, yeah. Uh, you know, aligning with your business partner from day one, mm -hmm. uh, 
mm. rather than discovering things along the way. This is also crucial. But yes. still, being able to recover from that and having those uh, tough conversations and uh, may still make it happen. Because again, if you share values, then the rest can be designed. Yeah. There's no issue whatsoever. Yeah. So all these things are, uh, they come at a price. Uh, but I guess, I guess we have to go through them to know that they are important. And uh, uh, there's no blue, uh, like full end-to-end -end blueprint without case studies. Like every blueprint out there is theoretical until you go in, in the business, in the mud, yeah. and you, you know, roll, roll up your sleeves and you start. And then it's a day-by-day -day experience. Yeah, the ability to recover is essential in the world of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. um, you, you are someone who is no stranger to, to challenges, uh, to roadblocks, to, to hardship. Uh, and so I'm wondering about COVID. Uh, COVID-19 obviously uh, had a, a very strong impact on the hospitality sector. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when things started to get really bad in the world and there's panic and there's fear and there's a lot of unknowns, uh, what was going on in your mind? I mean, you, you were, you're no stranger to, to challenging situations yet this is a globally kind of challenging situation that is directly impacting and affecting the industry that you are focused on. H mm. How did you, first of all, just process that in, in, you know, from a mindset perspective? And then next, what did you do? Uh, as a human being, uh, the uh, COVID deprived us uh, from the sense of being in control. Although, in reality, you are not always in control and you're never gonna be always in control. There is always uncertainty and unknowns. But COVID made this very prominent to us as a human, you know, like depriving us from the sense of we are driving our car or leading our business or even, even leading our families, you know, and being present for our families. You know, some people who have lost, uh, you know, relatives could not attend their, uh, memorials or right. burials or whatever you know it deprived you from all those sense of uh, you know being in control and things that you we thought that it was uh, it was a given it's easy to get uh, and accessible so that's as from a human perspective and that has uh, impacted me a lot in terms of reflecting on those things you know what's the priority what's important right. for me in this in this context but also as a business uh, we had a pipeline of clients that suddenly the pipeline is not there anymore. You had a pipeline of uh, cash coming your way from bills that suddenly is not coming your way anymore. Uh, you had plans of two, three years and those plans suddenly they are void. They, they are just, they disappeared. So it's as, as dramatic as I'm, I am saying it, it's, it, this was the reality. And right. this has created a lot of anxiety, uncertainty on a business level. Now, dealing with it is, is the key. And uh, the way I believe we dealt with it was uh, immediately bringing the team together, having, all, having again a tough conversation internally. How can we sustain ourselves? How can we, uh, I guess if I wanna put a, a title to this is bringing the sense of community into the, into the business rather right. than just uh, being, you know, uh, colleagues, and uh, so we, we we treated the business as a community. And then, how can we be in service of each other, create a sense of trust and security? And then, from there, moving the same context and the same concept to our clients. Now, mm -hmm. let's have this conversation with our clients. Let's see if we can create some sort of a community within the client base, i.e., being there for them, advising them at free of charge. We don't need to pay. We need to, to, to be, uh, we, we need to perform. We cannot stay in a hibernation for a long period of time. So we have reached to our clients and we, you know, offered our services. We have even one of the main partnerships we did in those, in, in, the, in COVID was the partnership with 2YTX. I believe, you know, Felix Villardi yeah. and uh, you've, you've interviewed him before on, uh, he was a guest at your podcast. And we, we, we actually met in a pro bono exercise. Right. How, how uh, beautiful is to meet someone and you become partners with because of a shared value mm -hmm. and, and by coincidence. 
So this is how the journey was. It's always about the process that you go through. And yeah. that process is when it is tough, there is something emerging. Wait for it. And when it comes, take it and, uh, and go forward. I think and, it's uh, great advice. Yeah. Really good advice. But before, before we wrap up, George, I have a few more questions I want to ask you. Uh, one is, I know that you are very big into uh, investing in yourself, learning, as you said, surrounding yourself with coach, coaches and people that can help you to get to that, to that next level. Yeah. Um, when you think about your typical you know, day-to-day activities, is there a habit, a principle, a practice, a mindset that is with you consistently every day that you feel has a really uh, or plays a really big kind of role and has a big impact on your performance and success that you're able to achieve? I love the way you led this uh, from having coaches around you. So uh, look, self-growth is is important like investing in self is important i i did my leadership certification in the last few years uh, my coaching certification so i'm a coach myself as well again it's all linked and it's part of all of sure. this but the, the main habits that you can create uh, to be a high performer and to be able to uh, uh, you know create some sort of a strong foundation mentally physically and you know uh, with, with a strong heart, you know, in mm-hmm. all of this is, uh, you know, um, number one, I believe an early riser is, 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 a, is, is a great asset to have, you know. How early is early for you? It could be four, it could be 5 a.m. That's, okay. that's key, I think. Uh, I've been an early riser forever. Uh, and I invest my first couple of hours in reading in journaling and exercising a little bit and in meditating. Those mm-hmm. four exercises, I do them in the morning. I get a lot of intuitions and a lot of uh, thoughts yeah. in this, this, this one or two hours. Uh, now, with, with the, you will always uh, f- face difficulties to do them regularly, but with a, with a consistency in mind, uh, you will be able to succeed 90% of the time. And uh, mm-hmm. it's okay not to succeed 100% of the time. We are right. human at the end of the day. We embrace yeah. that and we, we go for it. Yeah. So this is key for any, uh, you know, uh, any entrepreneur and even any individual, not necessarily someone who is just successful in the business world. Sure. He or she or they could be successful in any, mm-hmm. being, in being a, uh, a, a parent, you know, as long as you are mentally, physically uh, sane, then you can be present and for everyone around you, your business community, your family, yeah. you know, and so on. So when they ask me, George, what uh, uh, introduce yourself or they introduce me, I start by saying I'm a parent, you know, and that's key. Uh, so for me to be able to be present for my family, for my kids, yeah. I have I have three daughters, so uh, okay. a full time job for my wife and myself, and it's beautiful. So for, for you to be the present for them, uh, you need to be healthy and you need to be mentally sound as much as possible. There are always ups and downs, but this mm-hmm. is part of life. The way yeah. you deal with it, with open mind and open heart, that makes a difference a lot. In, uh, yeah. uh, the other question I have for you, George, is the last six or so months, if you were to choose one book that you have read or listened to, uh, could be fiction or nonfiction, that you just have really enjoyed um, and, and would recommend, what would that book be? Uh, it's uh, in the context of what we are living. I guess uh, The Alchemist, again and again. Great book. Yeah, it's fantastic. Classic and is an amazing book. And uh, it's inspiring and it has a lot, uh, a lot of ticks. It ticks a lot of boxes. But definitely yeah. there are lots of books. Um, there is a book recently was, uh, that I read was called Risk Forward. It's a beautiful book. There yeah. is a uh, two wide, uh, the uh, scale at speed is a nice book for the business, obviously. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, the four agreements on self. Uh, it's an amazing book to. Yes. To small, read. small book, but powerful concept. Small, but super yes. powerful concept. Uh, yeah. le- um, leadership and self deception. That's beyond what important for leaders and CEOs and organizations. It's uh, getting out of the box as a leader in all those tough situations when dealing mm-hmm. with humans, 
there are if there is presence you know and sensing the field of the future that's yes. also a beautiful book that is uh, is amazing there is uh, the dysfunctions of a team you know the four dysfunctions of a team by, right Okay, well, that's probably, that's probably enough, George, because we, we're going to try and link up in the show notes uh, as many of those as we can. But uh, that, that's a very, very good list. So thank you for sharing those with us. And thank you for coming on today um, and sharing a bit of your story and your journey, uh, your lessons learned and, and your success. Uh, it was a, a really uh, great conversation. And I'm hoping that people took away as much of uh, these insights and ideas and exercises and stimulations uh, as I did. But I want to make sure that people can learn more about you and your work. Where, where's the best place for people to, to go to learn more about uh, Link Advisory Group and the work that you do? So there is the website, obviously. They can access our company website, linkadvisory.com. Yeah. They can also access our profiles on LinkedIn. And we are more than happy to, you know, to exchange uh, you know, uh, and uh, start with the discovery. We always start with the discovery uh, session as a uh, as a uh, free of charge because this is just a conversation. We start with that, and then we take the the business conversation forward. Uh, that's it, basically. I, I want to just add one more thing that's uh, always uh, on my mind because when we appear in all those podcasts and in, in interviews, we appear as the the product behind the journey. Mm. Uh, but this is just the, the product that you see today is some sort of the end product or towards the end product. There is a lot of work, hardship, you know, sleepless nights, tears that, uh, that were put into, into what we're trying to present and to share our experiences and wisdom and what have you. Still a lot to learn, obviously, but, uh, you know, because it's, it, I felt it at, stay, at some stage, it was intimidating, you know, uh, listening to all those leaders. Uh, and I thought that this is something unattainable. Mm. And I want to tell all the entrepreneurs, especially the young ones, that there is nothing intimidating. We, we, we've, we've went the same journey that you're going today. You're going to fail. You're going to hit obstacles. Yeah. Keep on trying, on trying. And uh, it will, uh, things will definitely lead to greatness in a way or another. Yeah, that's a powerful message, uh, a very true message in my own experience as well. A great place to wrap up. George, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Michael, and uh, thank you, everybody who's listening.